Since getting back into PC gaming and building my own PCs, I've noticed that there's one of the biggest debates online is around power supplies. The debate is usually from two sides of the coin. The one side, you've got average budget builders that say budget power supplies are fine and they use them a lot. And on the other side, you tend to have the more higher end people saying that they will destroy your system within a matter of months. Now, I think that's a little bit extreme for some, some cases, and maybe some people do get power supplies that are actually faulty. But my general experience has shown that any power supply can be faulty, regardless of brand or quality. Now, when I used to build gaming PCs a long time ago, we didn't really worry about the brand or the quality of the components internally in a power supply. We generally just selected a power supply based on the power that it would produce and the connections that it had. Now looking in today's market, there's a lot of different power supply builders out there. And I wanted to see, are the budget ones really as bad as they say? And to do this, I've picked up one of these. This is an AeroCool Integrator Mod XT 750 Watt. And I've selected this because it's kind of a middle of the road kind of thing. It's not a 20 pound power supply, which I could imagine could be quite limited in its quality. Um, and it's not really one of the more expensive ones, but it is a semi-modular power supply, so it will suit many different builds. What I'll do is I'll open it up, show you what you actually get for this kind of money, and we'll see what kind of quality it really does bring. So with this power supply, we'll have a look at the obvious first, so packaging-wise. Aerocool are actually a really good up-and-coming brand. Their cases are really good, their AOIs are pretty good, and their power supplies are pretty much on the budget side, but you do generally get everything that you would get from a more higher brand. It's got certification, so this is an 80 plus bronze. It's a semi-modular power supply, so it gives you a lot of different connections. And the reason that I picked this one up in particular was because it came with full PCI Express connections. Now, you don't tend to see that a lot on power supplies for around this price. And this generally retails for about 50 to 60 pound, although I managed to pick it up for about 41 in the sale. The box generally tells you everything that you need to know, gives you a list of the connections and a list of the power outputs on the back. And it's not too bad, it's quite well packaged. If we open it up, we can see that you get generally the same thing as you do in all power supplies. You get a bit of an instruction book which tells you how to install it as well as giving you all the pin connections and all the information that you need to be able to install it in your system. Because it's a semi-modular you get a set of cables that you can actually use to uh, extend the power supply. You do also get a three pin plug so obviously this is for the UK. I've not actually had another power supply that's included one of these before um, even on some of the most expensive ones that I've bought so that's pretty good. You obviously get the screws to be able to fit it and you get the power supply itself. Which is this one. Now out of the box being a semi-modular you do get a certain amount of cables actually connected to it which include your 24 pin motherboard power, your 8 pin for your CPU power and one of the PCI Express connections, which actually has a two split on the end, automatically on the box. This means that you can pretty much install a system without using any of the extra cables. The semi-modular part is actually labeled quite well. It tells you exactly what you need on the back and it runs a 120 mil fan in the bottom. The unit is black and it again gives you all the specifications you need on the side here. Being a 750 watt, I found that it would actually suit most builds now because a lot of the, even the newer graphics cards require a 750 watt power supply minimum. And because it's got all the certification, I couldn't see an actual issue in using this. If we take a look at the cables that you actually get, they do come with quite a variety. So. To begin with, we have a cable that has two Molex and two SATA. Now that's quite unique because I haven't seen them before either. Generally, the ones that I've got is on one cable, you'll get all SATAs or you'll get all Molex and you can decide between. I have found issues with that in the past where 
you want one item that's a Molex and one item that's a SATA and you end up using two cables, whereas in this one you can actually get away with using one, so that's a good positive. You get another cable which just has SATAs on it and you get another cable which just has Molex, so that's usually what you get with the others. So it's great that they've included that cable. The last cable you get is your other PCI Express cable. It's marked in red so that you know it lines up to the red on the box and you get pretty much the same thing as what's already on the box um, that's not modular, uh, where it's two PCI Express. These are eight pins with the two pin extra connections, six pin with the two pin connections. Now I have used one of these for a while. I've put them up to systems just to see and give them a good benchmark and a good test to see how well they'll do. And that leads me on to some of the positives of the power supply. When running, it's completely silent. You can't hear it at all. I've had it hooked up to the system in the corner, which is more of a lightweight system, but it worked flawlessly. And I hooked it up to an older motherboard that had a set of SLI graphics cards. And I run the benchmarks for a few hours just to see if this would actually crank up the speed a bit. And it didn't, it actually was completely silent. You wouldn't have even known that it was running. So that's a good positive, very quiet and it can produce enough power to go with it. And the cable selection is very good. The negative side that I've found is generally the way that they've provided the non-modular cables. So as you can see, they're all actually in funny colors, uh, ketchup and mustard as they call it, which doesn't look very nice in the system. And it's the same for each of the cables. So you can clearly see the yellow and black on all of the cables, plus all the multi colors on the 24 pin. That's a bit of a shame because every other cable they give you is black, so you can hide it quite well in the system. And if you're buying a semi-modular power supply, generally you're buying it because you want to reduce the amount of cables so that your system looks pretty clean. Now, to be able to get that kind of look from this power supply, you're going to have to use some form of cable extensions, probably the braided ones that look very nice. But once you start adding on the price of those, this actually doesn't come as much of a deal. It, actually starts becoming the same price as what you would pick up a Cooler Master version or a Corsair version of this exact one. Except with those, you wouldn't need the extra cables because they generally do come in all in black. So there are a few negatives with it and there's quite a few positives with it. Now, this one in particular is recommended by a lot of the builders I spoke to, a lot of the budget builders that I spoke to, and they've been fitting them in systems for a very long time and they've reported not many issues with them so I would actually say that as a brand they're not too bad. Whether you want to trust a more budget power supply with your system is totally up to you. Some people don't recommend it, some people do recommend it. What I would suggest is taking a look at the actual system that you're trying to fit. Now a lot of the recommendations from the enthusiasts are that you must spend a lot of money on a power supply. Now that's okay when you're spending two to three thousand pounds on a computer because you want to protect that computer as much as you can and to do that you want to be able to put in some of the highest quality parts that you can so you're going to be looking more than an 80 plus bronze you're going to be going up to the gold and the platinum style and they will set you back quite a bit but when you're building a five to six hundred pound system it doesn't really warrant that much spending on a, on a power supply when if you're spending 100 to 200 pound on a power supply you're, you're pretty much sucking up the cost of the system all in one unit again some people say that that's okay because it's it's a part that you won't upgrade going forward but i tend to find a lot of people do upgrade the whole system anyway they don't generally just upgrade little bits at a time because when the new processors come out and the new graphics cards come out they like to have new motherboards new faster memory so i don't worry about that too much um, but I do like this power supply, it's quite good. I will use it going forward and we'll give it a more lengthy test. But apart from that, I think it's a very good power supply to be getting into. We'll need to get some uh, cable extensions just to hide some of this from uh, the more aesthetically pleasing computers. But apart from that, I'm quite impressed. So let me know what you like of this video by giving it a like. And remember to subscribe to the channel to see more openings like this and see what other kind of things we can have a look at.